Till Cape Fear River there. Uh, today we'll be doing a zone system, a more retrofitting a zone system. We have a existing four ton train system, split heap up, that we're going to retrofit with zone controls. Uh, it's actually not going to be too bad. It already has a trunk that's split into two sections. We have a two zone system. We're just going to take a couple of the runs from that one trunk and add a six inch power open close dampers. Uh, to kind of bundle them with one side and then there's going to be a another trunk that does uh, like a little frog type area. So that's the idea for today. It's an XCI or EcoJ panel. Two zones and we'll see how it turns out. This is our air handler. It's a train variable speed. 13 seer air handler uh, from 2008. That right there is the beginnings of our bypass duct coming off the plenum. Basically what I've created here is an extended plenum. Uh, on the far side heading that way is a 14 inch zone. And you see there's several takeoffs that come off. It's a bedroom over here and just a greater common area for the rest of it. And what I'm going to do is take two, one right here, one right here, two six inch dampers along with this seven inch over here and put them onto the 14 inch zone because this is also part of the greater common area. Uh, down a little bit farther, there's a 12 inch, it's hard to see right here, heading down this way, heading this way. And that'll service the finished room over the garage, which always stays hotter with like, like is the case a lot of the time. Uh, so basically from this 12 right here, back all the way to here is the plenum and you have dampers coming off the plenum. Some are tied in together, the sixes and the 14 and the 12 is by itself. That is the bypass damper. It's a little bit of an angle, so we're trying to straighten it back out so it can go across, head back into the return duct. And then that way it'll be nice and straight. It's all hard pipe. And that'll be controlled by a static pressure sensor, which will be about right here, since this section is actually part of the plenum. I should probably come around the corner a little bit so it doesn't uh, catch any odd airflow coming out around the corner. All right, that's where we are right now. Uh, I'm gonna start wiring up controls after I get done insulating and we've gone to pick up a couple more duct pieces that we needed. We are out here at the heat pump condenser and you know you see the capacitor has been changed with that custom hanger made in China like everything else. There's the contactor, potential relay, start relay, defrost board and right down here will be our little controller because it looks like there's just enough room for us right there. So that works out pretty good. Here is the ICM 492 all wired up. Down at the bottom is the control voltage, the same voltage that controls the contactor, controls this relay. There's a broken Y signal. The two wires on the right are the Y signal, various types of Y signals to the contactor. The red here is the incoming signal, or the outgoing signal to the contactor. The signal comes in here, completes here, gets back up to the contactor where it draws in for the compressor and outdoor fan. These two larger black wires monitor the voltage at the contactor, and if it drops below or above a specified range, it will cut it out and won't allow it to restart uh, if it trips offline for a certain amount of minutes. 245 volts, it's set up, it's set for 208. So we're gonna set it up for 240, which is uh, kind of an average voltage of around here. Delay. We're gonna do a delay of uh, I think 180 seconds. Uh, this might take a little bit. All right, we're set up for 180 seconds. We go on to the next task. It would be the over voltage percentage. Now I'm going to do let's see, 5% of 240 is 12. That would be 252. So I'm gonna go to about. 6%. I don't want it too, well, you know, 7%. Up into the 250s, 255. Once you get up higher than that, you could do some damage. Under voltage is 15%. That's fine because it's actually 208 equipment. So the only thing that's going to be affected by a drop of voltage in here or outside, or outside or uh, inside, will be the drop in transformer voltage. But that's really not what this is dealing with here. control is on because I'm controlling it with this voltage down here 
the control is on. If it was off, you wouldn't use these, you would just use up here. In the response, I'm going to put two seconds, one fault, and there's five faults, and back to the 240. It'll monitor and it will start up here in a minute whenever we call for cooling. As you see now, the, uh, the condenser is running. So this is just monitoring the voltage. If the voltage were to drop out, let's say you lost a leg of power and it lasted more than a couple seconds, it would shut down uh, the compressor and the outdoor fan, which is very good. I've lost a few, uh, a few different motors because of losing a leg of power or a partial leg of power where you have something like, instead of 240 or 230, you have 180 or 170 because you have 120 to one side and 50 to the other side to ground. So this is a good prevention for that sort of thing. Uh, again, it uh, does a lot for short cycling. doesn't allow motors to come off and come right back on again. Um, it's just a good little piece. Uh, I like it with the zone system. I think it works good. Uh, I have a free stat upstairs so we can cut out uh, the Y signal and it might only last for a few seconds because the coil would then heat right back up again and the free stat would close again. This way you'll definitely have a delay because in the case of the free stat, the thermostat doesn't know the signal is cut out. The signal is coming from the thermostat back to the free stat. So the thermostat still thinks the signal's on, but the free stat's cut it out. So the thermostat delay will not help any. So the outdoor unit would just come right back on again. So uh, it does a lot for helping out the motors out here. Just making sure everything lasts as long as it should. So that is all for the ICM 492. I'm going to head back inside. I'll be wiring up the zone panel. Uh, zone dampers and static pressure switch. Okay, our zone panel's in place. We have two dampers, power up and power close, three wires, one for power up and one for power close, and one common to run 24 volts to either one of those signals. The outgoing wire to the equipment also supplies some power to the static pressure switch, which is here, which has an adjustment knob in the middle. Thermostat 1 and thermostat 2. That's where they interface with the board. And then there's a mess of wiring for the dampers, and I manifolded some of the dampers together here. The wires that run over to the air handler. There's the 50VA transformer. And you can sort of see that inside there. That is the leaving air sensor. So that is where we are. We're about to turn it on now as soon as I close up the door and power up the system. All right, the static pressure switch came pretty much in a perfect position already, which is kind of nice. Uh, the bypass damper is barely closed with both zones calling. So when I shut down the main zone in a minute, the bypass should open a little bit there to let some of the, bio, or let some of the air uh, come back around so the static pressure uh, doesn't get too high. We're at 59 degrees in the supply trunk. And uh, all the lighting there is just different LEDs to indicate the functions. Red for power, yellow for compressor. Uh, green for a fan, orange for a reversing valve. And it's the same way with both thermostats. It lets you know what it's calling on which stat and what the unit is calling for on this side. And that green and red indicators right there are whether or not the dampers are open or closed. And this right here is just the 24 volts of power. So we're pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to shut down the main zone to make sure everything's working all right. And we should be good. Okay, we shut down the main zone. The bypass is modulating open and shut now to uh, allow some of the air to pass back through the unit and lower the static pressure in the duct. All of our little six inch runs that are on the other zone are red because they're offline now. And down there, you can see our 12 inch zone is calling. And you can see our 14 zone is not. So now, uh, the temperature drops a little bit because we have a smaller zone, more air is being bypassed, and the coil is getting colder, therefore the air around the coil is getting colder. 